What is up, everybody? Sysadmin Sean here, and today we're doing part two of our Zabbix guide. We're going to be adding hosts to our Zabbix install, and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do that. Um, the agent, we're going to use SNMP, and we're going to use uh, some interesting, neat little different versions, all thanks to templates and stuff that come with the system. So stay tuned. All right, so here is our Zabbix environment already set up, and you can see I've already got some errors. Uh, we've got some some sort of severe problems. We can go here and kind of look at the whole list. Uh, actually, we can't. Oh, because it's got this. Clear that out. Apply. There's all of our problems. Something is getting resolved here. We've got other stuff going on. You'll notice that we are monitoring Tigerhost 1 multiple times, and that's because we are actually monitoring the hardware and the hypervisor level which is something that Zavix lets you do really easily. So I'm going to show you how to do the hardware level really quick via SNMP, and then I'm going to show you how to do the Proxmox really quick via uh, macros and a template. So all we got to do is we're going over to inventory. No, we're going to data collection hosts. We're going to add a new host. We're going to call this first one TigerHost02. And that's the visible name. The template is going to be Dell 720, and it should get that to load, we want Dell PowerEdge R720 by SNMP. And the host group, we're gonna call this hypervisor just cause that's what fits. And then we go in here, we select SNMP. We put in the IP address of our iDRAC because we're actually monitoring the iDRAC SNMP. Now you could do IPMI, but for some reason I feel like mine is a little too old. So we'll put in that. This is public because I'm lazy and that's it. And then we can, you know, go over here, here, here. This is inherited. I'm not going to change any of this. This is pre-built stuff related to um, the SNMP check specifically for Dell R720s, which is what I have. We can put in inventory information here. Uh, we can do value mapping if we need to, but we don't. That's all we need to do. And we can hit add. And that's going to get added. So then we can go into monitoring hosts. And we'll see it here, and it's not quite loaded yet, but look at this. So here's latest data, and this is going to start filling in. As you can see, it's already pulling in, you know, information. And if I, I think if I hit refresh again, we might even, yeah, we've already got a second page where it's starting to grab the NIC cards, the power supplies. It's doing SNMP walk for power supply totals, you know, system name, system location, uptime. We had a power outage recently. Um, and it's going to slowly fill in all of these data points for us. We didn't have to build anything. It was already built via a template. So there's our firmware. There's our hardware serial number. Please don't steal my serial number. No. Um, so it's collecting all this information. We've got some critical overall health status because I only have one power supply plugged in. And what we'll see is those critical things will start becoming alerts. See? And as you can see, we have it on Tiger Host 1 as well. Power supply one status is in a critical state. Now, if I had a separate circuit, I could go ahead and plug that in, but there's really no reason they're failover. And now we're monitoring the hardware of our hypervisor, the actual physical hardware via the iDRAC using SNMP calls. But what if we want to monitor Proxmox? We've already got Tiger Host one Proxmox here, and it's listing a bunch of VMs that just aren't on, um, which is fine. I'm not using them, so. I could adjust this alert if I wanted to, but let's go ahead. We'll go to hosts. We're going to add another host. Now, I believe I don't really have to do this. I think I could just put it all in one, but I kind of want to keep it separated so you can see how it's different. We're going to call this tigerhost02 dash proxmox. Template's going to be proxmox via HTTP. And we're still going to put it in hypervisor. And then we're going to give the, we actually don't have to put anything in here. So we don't need an interface. It's not required because we're actually going to be using macros from the template. And we click inherited host macros. So you'll see that there is a ID token, which we had to make an API user. So we've got one right there. You can see that. Root at PAM Zabbix. And I have this information from TigerHost1. So we're just going to copy it and put it into TigerHost2. So it's going to be root, and it you click change, root at PAM. I think it's what bangs Zabbix. I need to go copy it. We can go over here. We can go to macros, and we can already see what we need to copy. So we'll grab that. 
Actually, let's uh, we'll make a little notepad down here so that I don't have to keep back and forthing. And we know the IP address. So let's create this host again. Because we accident we backed out. And I'm just using hypervisors. If I wanted to, I could make Proxbox hosts and it could create a no host group for us automatically. Just boom, just adds it. Do 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 do. We go down here, we click change, copy this, paste this. We click change here. This is where our secret key goes. Again, this is all internal, so you can't really access it. And this is where we put in the um, IP address for this one. And it's already got the port. We hit add. And then it's it's scooping it up in here. We can go to monitoring, latest data. There's all the Tiger Host 2 stuff still coming in because that's what we were on last. We back out and hit apply. We should see everything that's getting scooped in. Oh, we've got to search for it. And then once it will check, I think I can force it. We should see. Yep, there it goes. Now it's starting to populate. So the way this works is templates have features called discovery rules. And as it scans the system using that API user account that we just made, it is going to scan through the system, find information about the VMs and everything. Proxmox is sending information to Zabbix for us to just let us know, hey, do we have access to the API service? Are we in a cluster? How is the cluster status? It's grabbing disk space. It's getting CPU usage, all sorts of really neat stuff. And of course, if we go back to the dashboard, we're going to see a ton of problems. As you can see, more VMs that aren't running, um, high memory usage on that one. Pretty much, you know, that's it. That's, that's what we're getting here. Um, and it's even doing it on multiple ones. So you probably wouldn't even, since those are in a cluster, we probably could have just done with one and it would have monitored everything within my Proxmox system. Um, but that's what I wanted to show you super quick. And another big shout out to the Zabbix book because they just started the, they just released the chapter on setting up hosts. Let's see if we can find it. Here we go, hosts. So they talk about adding hosts, host names, host groups, how to do all this, simple checks, host interfaces, which is what we were working on today. So they have the agent, they have SNMP, JMX, which I am not familiar with all, and then IPMI. Now, technically, I should be able to get my hardware to work via IPMI, but Dell IDRAC is a little confusing there, and they even have IPMI host settings. Um, oh, yeah, I was going to show you the Zabbix agent. Super easy to do. We just go to, there's actually a really neat thing, Zabbix agent download. If you go here, there's this really cool feature. Let's say we're going to grab it for Linux. Uh, actually, that's not what I want. I want Zabbix packages. Uh, we'll do 7 LTS. We'll do Rocky Linux. We'll say OS version 9. We'll say agent. We don't have to get anything else. It will give us all this stuff. And we've already got all that set up, so we should just be able to go right here, copy this, hop over to our Zavix VM, which is already set up to look for agent. And I don't know if I can paste in here. I have forgotten. Pop in here real quick. We do not DNF install Zabbix dash agent, I believe is what it said. Yep, it is. So we'll hit guess here. We'll get that installed. And then we'll go back and we'll see, do we need to do anything else? No, we just need to start it. System CTL restart uh, enable. So it starts by default. And then system CTL start Zabbix agent. Now that's installed. We haven't configured it. There's a lot of things you can do to configure your agents. I don't think I have to do it on this one just because it's on the local host. But let's take a look at our problem. Monitoring problems. Because we want to make this go away. So let's go to Zabbix server. Let's go to latest data. 
And let's see if we have the Zabbix agent showing up now. Well, it looks like we do actually, because we're already pulling information in here. So let's go back to problems. Is it still a problem? It is still a problem. We can technically click this and say, hey, check, but it is, it's, it's, it's checking, it's getting information. Let's go to Zavig's agent is now available. So that's cleared up, so it should be gone. Yeah, I don't see it anymore. Let's go to our agent monitoring hosts. Zabbix server. Enabled Zabbix agent availability is now green. So it sees the agent and it's talking to it perfectly fine. Um, and as you can see, we also have all these wonderful little problems from our hardware and our Proxmox host. But that's it. That's super easy. It takes a, a it's a little nervous when you when you first start, when you're like, how do I do this again? Data collection. Okay, because I'm wanting to collect data. And then I'm gonna go to hosts because I'm gonna add a host. And I'm going to get create host or import. But the templates are really wild. So if you want, like, there's so many choices. There's regular templates, applications, cloud, databases, network devices, operating systems, power. So, like, we could probably, let's do this. Let's check this out. The Zabbix server. We could go here. So it's already got Linux by Zabbix agent and Zabbix server health. So I was going to add Linux, but we don't have to now because it already pre-added those. And we could still do Linux by SNMP, uh, Zabbix Active Agent, which don't really need to do for this, but it is available. And then of course it's the loopback address because it's itself. So that's it, super easy. But thanks and we'll see you in the next one.